Welcome back to Game Changers. In this segment, we'll talk with Tony Robinson about his experiences at Tennessee, and we'll sit down with former UT basketball player Rob Murphy. He'll tell us about some harsh realities for student athletes and some struggles he's faced after he graduated. The thing that nobody will tell you is that college sports is a business just like everything else. Um, and while you may have a coach that cares about you, you may have an athletic director who cares about you, but at the end of the day, college sports need to make money. And if you're not helping them do that, the institution as a whole is not going to have your back. Rob Murphy, number 15, Brentwood, Tennessee. Rob Murphy had a modest career with the Vols. In his two years with Tennessee, he appeared in just five games. Rob did excel in the classroom and was on the 2011-2012 SEC Winter Academic Honor Roll. He graduated with his degree in logistics in May of 2013, but once graduation was behind him, having been a college athlete didn't help on his job hunt. I just couldn't get a job in my field. Um, really, everybody I talked to, they wanted to know if I had had an internship, and obviously I hadn't because I didn't have time to. You can't do anything besides school and sports if you want to succeed at either one of them really is what it comes down to. Often athletes are viewed as heroes by their community when they contribute to a big win, but hiring managers aren't interested in that. They're looking for someone with job experience. For me, nobody seemed to care. I really didn't get any offers. I um, applied a lot of places, barely even got a call back, honestly, when my resume didn't have an internship on it. Although Rob wasn't a star on the team, he was expected to work just as hard as anyone else. Having to watch his friends on campus head home to their families for the holidays while he stayed behind to practice was difficult. One of the hardest things is breaks, like a month for Christmas break, a week for Thanksgiving, you know. I'm in an apartment by myself and he's, you know, at home doing whatever he wants to do for a month and I'm sitting there just passing the hours by until it's time to go practice or condition. Student athletes must devote their time to their sport and their studies. And when they're not doing either, they're expected to be a model citizen and serve school as a positive representative. When speaking to the media, they have to put thought into every word they say. And during interviews, there's usually an employee from the school standing by to prep and assist them. Tom Sikoviak is the men's basketball associate director for media relations. One of his jobs is to teach student athletes how to present themselves in front of the media. Every person when, they, when you come in new, you have sort of a seminar on relating to the media. Um, he stays on top of relating to the media. He's always, you know, keeping us on task with that. He handles all the media requests. So if there is actually a media person who wants to talk to you, it has to go through him. And then he preps you for that specific interview. Um, so he really does a whole lot to make sure, to the best of his ability, that nobody's putting a bad name on Tennessee. For some student-athletes, they can manage to say the right things, but forget to put the same thought into their tweets. In 2012, Ohio State's third-string quarterback Cordell Jones tweeted, Why should we have to go to class if we came here to play football? We ain't come to play school. Classes are pointless. This is the exact mentality the NCAA is fighting when they stress academic progress among student-athletes. But social media presents a whole new challenge for media relations. Once you put it out there, you can't get it back. and everything you put on social media you know it's not just for fun anymore it's you need to brand yourself as a person you need to brand the things you're a part of like UT but the mistakes a student athlete can make range from a thoughtless tweet to a serious crime if the crime is big enough it becomes national news but even small infractions will still get local coverage Johnson and Sapp were charged with resisting arrest coaches and advisors work hard to keep student athletes on the right path but college students are still just young adults trying to figure themselves out and are capable of making mistakes. As far as things people were doing outside of practicing games, I mean, there's always somebody that's doing something they shouldn't do. And, you know, I shouldn't say always, but it happened pretty frequently. Most student athletes are just trying to put an honest day's work into their studies and their sport but they can find themselves in a difficult position when they are being treated differently and their performance receiving extra attention. And we're talking about the professors in the classroom. There's some professors that, you know, they will let you slide by because you're an athlete, especially some of the bigger name athletes. They let them get away with whatever they want. And then there's other professors that find out you're an athlete and they're not a fan of that. You know, they, um, there's been times when I've felt like a professor was kind of out to get me or out to wait till I made a mistake or, you know, oh, he's just one of those lazy athletes type of thing. Rob says that this preferential treatment from professors was rare, but it happened. 
So how does a student athlete handle all the demands between school and sport? Rob tells us it's about the individual and it's about their character. The more mature you are, the more confident you are, the more um, just comfortable in yourself as a person you are, the better you're going to be with all of it. Rob tells us he feels lucky to have had the opportunities he's had at the University of Tennessee. He says the people at UT have always been helpful and supportive, but the business of college sports looks out for the bottom line. They can cut your scholarship at any time, and, uh, and I've seen it happen. Today, Rob is the athletic director for Concord Christian School in Knoxville. He enjoys every day in the office and loves that he still gets to be involved in sports. His advice to student athletes would be to value your education and get your degree. If you have hopes of turning your game into a career, have a backup plan and be prepared for the business of college athletics. There are people who are going to help you with your job and your career that just because just they care about you. Um, but at the same time, you just have to know it's a business and it's, you know, it's a little bit more cutthroat than people realize. Rob shared the court with some really talented players. One of those was Jarnell Stokes. Jarnell decided that taking a shot at the NBA was the best decision for him. After a lot of prayer and deliberation, I've made this decision to forego my senior season and an NBA draft. Jarnell was drafted by the Utah Jazz and later traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. In August, he signed a three-year deal worth $2.5 million. Tennessee has a history of producing professional athletes, especially in the NFL. But while most professional athletes do come from big schools, most student athletes won't turn pro. Everybody on that team right now thinks they're going to play in the NFL. Go ask them. <laughs> you know, and why wouldn't they think that? I mean, I mean, they've always been, they've always performed at an elite level their entire life. Uh, then all of a sudden, but it, you know, it's just, but then all of a sudden they're not. Well, you can't play sports all your life, so there's some, you got to be able to do something else. It's first and goal. Tony Robinson was a rising star with the Vols in 1984 and led Big Orange to a 7-4-1 record along with an appearance in the Sun Bowl. In 1985, he was a Heisman candidate before blowing out his knee in a tight game against Alabama. I mean, he was on top of the world. And what happened with him, if his injury would have occurred today, he would have played the next year. But, you know, the medical advances weren't there in 1985 when he gets injured like that. So he's done. Your injury's gonna last you the rest of your life, you know. So, uh, guys get injured in college or whatever, man. You know, you're gonna need something later on because you might not be able to play anymore football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Tony did have a brief NFL stint in 1987 as a replacement player during the NFL strike, but after his injury, he would never fully recover. Issues with cocaine abuse would also follow Tony, but now he is clean and putting his addictions behind him. He says his injury changed his life, and his advice for today's players would be to prepare for anything getting hit from all the different angles and you know what I'm saying one lick could just end your career right there so now what you're gonna do you know what I'm saying you gotta do something else get your education when we come back we'll check in with some student athletes who have settled into their new roles and we'll ask them how busy their typical days are stick around <laughs> 